Welcome back fellow fans of Clash of Clans, or if it is your first time here, now is the time to hit that subscribe button because that's right, it is that time of the year again in Clash of Clans. It is time for snow, it is time for snow, there we go, and of course, the December update 2018 Clash of Clans sneak peek number one coming to you right now. Again, I say sneak peek number one, but who knows, are there more? I can't answer that question, but you just have to look back at the history of updates. How many sneak peeks are there usually? Hmm? Hmm? Okay, let's get into it. We're talking about the Christmas trees. This right here is the first ever, the 2012 Christmas tree, one of my personal favorites. And we've seen a variety of Christmas trees over the last six years. So I thought we would take a quick trip walk down memory lane and look at all of the Christmas trees from Clash of Clans, starting with the simple 2012, the somewhat ominous looking golden 2013, back to simple looking with the garland and 14, then the 15, dark and scary 2016, one of my favorites. And then last year, not a fan of the frock, the snowy 2017 with the potion under the tree. And here we go, 2018, bringing us I have to say, right up there with my favorite Clash of Clans Christmas trees, that is a good looking tree. And it's got, if you take a really close look, you'll notice that most of the obstacles, seasonal obstacles and trees have some sort of theme behind them. This one, I don't know, it's shocking. It's electrified. It's, yes, okay, so it looks like maybe there's a little Tesla coil at the bottom or at the top, I don't know. Obviously some high voltage running through this year's tree, possibly to celebrate Town Hall 12 and the advent, the introduction of the Giga Tesla. So yes, I'm happy about the tree, but there's more right here where the trader should be. Hold on, we're gonna talk about some new magic items coming to the game. So we switch over to a Town Hall 11 this time, and we're gonna slide on over, check out the trader, and yes, okay, so there's two new magical items coming to the game. The first one is going to be the Hero Potion. So for now, this is in the developer build, so the numbers may change, but right now it's 300 gems for five levels to all of your heroes for one hour. And I mean, I'm just gonna tell you personally, I'm not overwhelmed by this. Uh, I don't know if five levels is enough. I would love to see it be 10 levels. Uh, also, it's capped out at your max level for your town hall so you're you can't over level your heroes which might have been fun can you imagine you buy that potion you get level 70 heroes for an hour i like that idea okay that that would have been a lot of fun but let's go ahead and use one of these and uh you can see again plus five for one hour we'll go ahead and add it to our current heroes at this town hall 11 and then you'll see, you can see the numbers. Now remember, when an army is boosted, they turn blue. If you've ever been attacked by what looks like a blue level number to an enemy's units, that's because they were boosting their army. Now, you might see this purple glow as the heroes are boosted. You'll notice the Warden didn't go above 20, but the Archer Queen is 36. And just quickly take a look up close and personal at the boosted king and queen right here. You can see what they look like. You can also see the status shows up next to the end battle button on the screen. And again, I personally would love to see it either be cheaper or have it boost more levels or boost longer. I know that it might be better if you're close to getting that hero ability, but for me, I don't know. Okay, so let's move on to the shovel of obstacles. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. It is a shovel that lets you move obstacles. That's right, you can move any obstacle in your base for only 500 gems. So again, I'm not thrilled at the cost of this one. I feel like that is steep to move a single obstacle. Uh, again, these are developer build numbers, so these could change, but let's just go ahead and say we've got this and we're going to go ahead and grab this gem box and we're going to move it well okay sorry peter about this one but peter's 17 dollars spending all that time to get a gem box in the middle of his base and now you can do it for 500 gems so there you go um you know i think that it's more obviously for players that got a seasonal obstacle and they have it in a bad spot they want to move it out to the edge 
or maybe they want to make a beautiful arrangement. It's going to be expensive though, unless it's changed. 500 gems seems like a lot. Now, of course, this might be something that shows up in clan games. I don't know yet. It's possible. I have noticed that based upon the current developer build numbers, it looks like the shovel only shows up in the shop maybe like once every two to three weeks. It's really rare that it shows up at least a week apart. And more often I found when I was checking it out, two to three weeks between appearances of the shovel. But again, it's the dev build. We don't know how that compares to the actual numbers or actual frequency of these items. So I've just taken, for example, the Halloween cauldrons and I've moved them all from this one base all over to one spot. So this is just a non-imaginative idea of what somebody might do if they had 4,000 gems to waste because that's pretty much what it would take to move eight obstacles. And again, it could take months to get that many shovels as well. They appear one at a time. But let me know down in the comments if you think 500 gems for a shovel and 300 gems for the hero potion is too much, too little, or just right. I'm curious also to hear if players would use the hero potion. Now I understand, maybe if your king or your queen are at level 5 and you want to unlock their ability for an hour, that might be the ideal time to use it. Other than that, I'm not so sure that that would really be that practical, if that's going to add that much of a boost. You know, maybe it should be 10 or even 20 levels. Okay, not 20, that's way too much, but anyway, okay. So we got our cauldrons lined up, but of course there is an easier way to do this. If you don't want to get an obstacle in an inopportune spot, just build yourself a spawner base. This is an example of an obstacle edge spawner base. And what I mean by that is, there is not a single two by two space left in the playable area on the base. There is no room for an obstacle to spawn. Obstacles will spawn in two by two squares. So as long as you have something occupying every two by two square, just like this build right here, I will zoom out, then you will be guaranteed that the obstacles will spawn around the edge. Of course, you have no control over where on the edge they spawn, but at least they will spawn out on the edge. And remember this, 45 is the magic number. That's the maximum number of obstacles you can have in a base. The regular obstacles, now seasonal obstacles will spawn above 45, but if you have 45 seasonal obstacles, the regular obstacles will no longer spawn. If I made that clear, if not, I apologize. Anyway, good luck and let me know if you're gonna move your obstacles. All right, let's get into a few update and non-update related questions. A lot of people asking about the Town Hall 9 video. Uh, this was the minority view that Town Hall 9 was too fast, too easy. I think he was just trolling me. I do agree that Town Hall 10 is the new Town Hall 9. That feels like more of a challenging place to be, especially for war players. And yes, you can get there without buying gems. You just remove your obstacles, those 45, and you can get there. Lots of players maxing out free to play as well. And then Tasty Rainbro and several other players talking about the difficulty of the hero grind at Town Hall 9. And I do agree, that is what really, really slows things down at Town Hall 9. So many levels to push with heroes. And oftentimes you will be maxed out with everything else and only have your heroes left. Maybe you have some walls left as well. But it's true, I wouldn't say ignoring Town Hall 9 or 10, but I do feel like the new content is always going to be at those higher Town Hall levels because that's where they want you to go. They want you, they are encouraging you to upgrade. And so we'll see. Also CWL, it's very hard. And yes, they did add Siege Machines to Town Hall 10 and not Town Hall 9, just compounding the problem. And then Harry right here says, Siege video title, upgrades to Town Hall 10. Well, that's possible, but hey, some people still love Town Hall 9. And then Gregzy says, he misses the days where Galadon gone and Pat went to Helsinki. I miss those days too, but you know what? There's more days to come. Town Hall 12 has revitalized this game, and this next update is going to be amazing as well, so get ready. Subscribe, have a fantastic day, be kind to each other, and yes, come back again tomorrow for more exciting, what, I can't, more exciting videos and full attacks.
You're telling me I spent years getting a perfect Christmas tree gym box base and then this happens? Ridiculous! 